this weekend, we're down at Second Valley, which is about an hour and a half, two hours south of Adelaide, and uh, we decided to come here because about a month ago we went to Victor Harbour, which is on the other side of the Fleurieu Peninsula, and we stopped by here on the way back from that trip, and it was beautiful. We loved it. The All the people were out at the beach. It's a very small beach, just back through there. It looked warm and really calm and shallow, and there was heaps of opportunities for snorkeling and stuff. And we came for a swim because it was a hot day and our car had no air conditioning. And we swam out this way, uh, just paddled, um, hoping to find this sea cave, like uh, a cave because this rock gets a lot of holes in it. Uh, and so there's meant to be a cave around here somewhere and it's half submerged in the water so you can like swim in it and you can see out it's beautiful and stuff so we didn't find it so it's definitely back this way I know where it is now so we brought a few of our friends and we're renting a cabin up at the caravan park and we're gonna be here well we were here last night and then we're gonna be here tonight we'll leave Sunday morning this whole Fleurio Peninsula is meant to have heaps of good snorkeling and good fishing so there's heaps of people with fishing rods out at the jetty and over on all these rocks um, and also the snorkeling's meant to be fantastic there's a whole lot of like sea grasses and it's really shallow and really rocky and so you're meant to be able to snorkel all up and down here there was a six foot great white shark spotted just under the jetty back there yesterday maybe the day before in the news article though it said it had moved on so I don't expect to see any shark attacks today so it's good it moved on because that's what we're all here to do we want to sit around on the beach and swim and snorkel and just have a good time uh, obviously I'm going to get some photos this morning we got up for sunrise though um, I wasn't expecting much I did see this hole in the rock, this arch, last time when we were swimming, and I wanted to come back. The view out this way isn't as good as I thought maybe it would be. Um, I did snap a few photos, you can see them at the end of the video, but I'm definitely going to be out for sunset again, and we'll see about sunrise. <laughs> we'll probably go out for sunrise again. We've had a bit of a morning, it's not too bad, it's not too chilly but I think it's almost time to make our way back. Maybe get some breakfast, get some coffee, and then it's time to get in the water. Hold that thought for a minute. We're just coming back up the hill, because otherwise you have to get your feet wet walking around on the beach to get back. And I thought I'd continue up here. I left Kate to go back to the cabin because she was really hung hungry. I thought I'd continue up. This is where we're coming probably this afternoon for sunset because the sun will set back that way somewhere. And I also thought for sunrise tomorrow morning. I came up. It's beautiful. Look at that view. So, some real quick photos. Well, I'll take as long as I want. And, uh, then I'll get going. Then it's going to be breakfast time. If you look down there, there's already a bunch of swimmers out. We're getting their morning swim in. A few kayakers fishing. Oh, it's a beautiful morning. So it's about midday now. Uh, we're already set up at the beach, but I've just come back um, to set up the underwater housing the camera. So this is the Outex underwater housing. Uh, it fits my Sony a7 III and the 16-35 to uh, G Master lens. So I bought this when we went to Hawaii back in 2019 and it wasn't very successful. Uh, I used it here and there. I'm gonna say the settings on my camera weren't really great for just pointing it at a subject, clicking the button and hoping that I got the shot. Um, 
So I'll talk about my settings for this today. Um, and then I think the second or third time I used it, I used it on a night manta ray dive. It worked fine there. That was like fresh out the box uh, that I put it on and used it. I think maybe I used it once more after that, but then it was, I think the third time that I used it, uh, that it didn't work. It was during, it was on a shark uh, snorkeling trip. So we're out in a boat uh, in the ocean uh, looking at sharks swimming below us. I did get a few shots uh, from that particular trip, but what I now realise the issue was is that the silicon that is around all the rings that sort of uh, hold the silicon outer onto the camera and keep it all airtight, uh, they have a silicon grease around them and that had been pretty much washed off in the previous um, trips with it. So what happened there is a small amount of water got in and uh, because it was so warm, just the air and the water was so warm, it was so humid, the inside of the housing was getting all foggy and, you know, humid. And I... It wasn't taking photos or something, and then I got out of the boat and I sat there, and then the shutter, <laughs> the shutter just started going off, and I tried turning it off and on and off and on, and it was it just kept going, and eventually through the housing I managed to pop the battery out of the bottom of the camera, and that stopped it. But then the camera wasn't turning on, and I was like so worried, and when we were on the uh, going back on the boat from that trip, the guy there was like, oh, I didn't want to tell you at the start, but I've seen a few people come in with those and uh, they broke their cameras. I mean, if you told me that beforehand, I, I would have just been like, ah, it'll be fine. But I persisted. And I'm going to persist again, but I'll be a little more cautious about it. So uh, what I've done is I went to... Uh, a dive camping store and I got this little tub of silicone grease which is what they suggest you put on there. I'm just going to make sure that all the rings and all the seals of those rings and the thread of the screws and the rim of the silicon they're all properly lubricated and so hopefully that will create a good seal. This is the camera that went in the water that time. I ended up sending it to Sony. Uh, we were in Banff then. When we got back to Canada I sent it off to Sony in the States and by the time it reached them, like a week later, it was working and it was turning on and apparently they took some things apart and made sure it was clean and it's been fine ever since. There's like a little screw in this door that looks a little rusty um, and sometimes it makes this a little difficult to open. It's still working and it's like a year and a half later, so I'm happy about that. As for the camera settings, I'm going to be under the water, through the mask and then through the back of this thing. There's not a whole lot you can actually see. It's not like you're blind at all. You can definitely see at least shapes and colour and light and all of that. Um, but I just want to take a lot of the thought out of the photo taking process. So I've set it to shutter priority because I definitely don't want to lose any photos to them being blurry from like me moving around while swimming. I've set it to a 200th of a second. So that's that. Chuck the camera in there and then I'm going to get back to the beach where hopefully lunch will be getting off. Don't have long until sunset now. It was a very nice day at the beach. We sat around a lot, did about two hours worth of snorkeling. There was quite a lot of fish. Uh, to be honest, not as many as I thought there was going to be, but heaps of beautiful like seaweeds and sea grasses and things like that. Made it to the cave. Uh, so that was quite good. 
but uh, the water was really messy with like bits of seaweed and stuff. I don't know if it's the cave itself or it's because of all the people who are like cliff jumping into the water out the front of it. But uh, it was really nice. The underwater housing for the camera, it worked. It did get quite humid in there, but it was fine in the end. Um, once I got it out of there, after the two hours or so in the water, I mean, there was a couple little damp spots on there, but overall it was fine. And that was even after diving down like a couple meters with it on a couple occasions. So it worked out fine. And then we just sat around and had a nice time. So I've come up on the hills again. It's beautiful up here, but a bit windy. There's Second Valley behind me. Then you can see where the sun's gonna set in a couple minutes behind that hill. And that's the beach down there. And if, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you can pick it out, but that's the hill I was at down there this morning. Looks like someone set up their uh, one person tent. They seemed awful proud of it because they were taking photos of it for about five minutes sitting up there. It is a good spot. There's a few people waiting for sun sunset. It's great up here. It's so it's so nice. And there's even some wispy clouds. So hopefully there'll be a little colour out the back there. All the others there enjoying sunset down at the beach. Um, and we'll come up here tomorrow morning for sunrise. So I'm going to spend quite a lot of time up here. But right now I'm going to get the other camera out. I'm going to work on some shots and uh, I'll see you in a minute. The sun's gone. It's gone again. It's gone very quickly. Um, I snapped off just one composition with the sun star and it's gone. Which is probably a lesson in not messing around with all of this and and you know get the shot get the shot first that's a good lesson uh, it's a bit breezy a bit cold up here and now with the sun dipped behind that mountain you know what dipped behind a bank of clouds as well it must be because there's no light no light on anything so I think it's probably properly gone to be honest, I don't like this spot looking this way uh, as much as I thought I would. I think looking back that way, uh, where the sun rises, that's probably a little more, that's a little more pleasing to the eye. This, it seems very uh, lopsided. The image slants from the top left corner down to the bottom right, and it's a real diagonal line through the middle of the image, and I don't like landscapes when that happens. I, I took this photo and I think the rocks and the pier perhaps help balance it a little bit but I don't think it's as good as this morning's. Um, and then again I only managed to get that one composition before the, the sun disappeared. Um, all the settings were pretty basic though again keeping it to like f11 for the uh, depth of field because I had those some nice rocks in the foreground with some orange lichen on them. Oh, getting a bit chilly. I'm still in my beach attire. One thing I didn't mention, so I said that I was setting the uh, this camera here in the housing, I was setting that to shutter priority, which I never do. If I'm just being lazy then it's always aperture priority because I think I'm more set on the aperture when it comes to landscapes and the shutter is it's just it's not as important for static landscape shots but because I always go to shutter priority I switched back to it a handful of times because I'd switch to movie mode snap a bit of a video the cows moving in the background get a video and then I'd switch it back but I'd go to shutter priority and shutter priority was set to like a second, a second and a half. And the only time I could actually see the back of the screen, like I said, that it was in the cave where everything was so dark that you could actually see the screen come through and it was quite clear. 
And I, <laughs> I was reviewing a couple photos in there. I'm like, what am I doing? It's another learning opportunity. I got quite a few blurry photos. I'm not that disappointed because like the couple photos that I were getting sharp, like they were sharp photos because I'd actually set it to shutter priority. They seem to be the ones that were more interesting. Ugh. But you live and you learn. I think that's everything for you. I'm getting cold. The clouds are looking cool, but I'll uh, I'll drop down a bit further. And I didn't hate looking directly down into the bay. Maybe there'll be some nice shots there with some uh, some colourful clouds. It's getting a little more interesting. I'll go down there. I'll see you in the morning for sunrise. Over there somewhere. So that was just a little bit of this morning. It was again really nice. Kate and I managed to drag the other three up out of bed at 6.30 and bring them up here. Um, they've left though because obviously they're quite hungry. Um, I think a couple of them want to get back to bed. But I got a few shots. So my plan was, uh, if you look behind me here, uh, I was just getting shots of this path leading out towards the hills. You see who that guy is? That's uh, the guy who camped up here. He was recording himself doing like Tai Chi in his underpants just as I was coming back through. On the hill below that hill where he is, uh, that's where I started getting photos of pink clouds. I shot towards the beach and then back towards the the coast in that direction. So after those photos of the pink clouds it went very dull and boring so we sat up there next to the tent waiting for sunrise to properly happen when the Sun started lighting up that hill over there near the jetty um, I went back down I got some photos of that with with the photos looking back towards the beach and this hill uh, it was again that issue where it seems like quite a diagonal image and so I was doing my best to like put some uh, some foliage, some plants, some of those, uh, the little grasses more towards the to the right hand side of the frame just to sort of uh, give more weight to that edge and keep the composition looking balanced and I think I got some nice shots it did feel like I was running around a bit crazy there because there's so many little bushes and I felt like I was running out of time. And finally I've come back here. It's pretty good doing as, uh, this looks more like yoga. Yeah, that's a downward facing dog. Um, he's just doing some sort of handstand. He's probably got more followers on Instagram than me. Finally, I got a couple shots of this path here. It looks great. I noticed it when I came back yesterday morning, but I didn't want the sun so high. I mean, now it's behind clouds, but it was a little lower and it just made for some, you know, some softer, more golden light. So I'm happy with that. I think this will be it for the trip. It's gonna be breakfast and then sitting around and then lunch. I don't think we're going swimming again. And then back home. Anyway, Second Valley is beautiful and it's so close to Adelaide. An hour and a half, two hours. Easy. I will definitely be back here.
for more photography in the future. Alright, stick around for all the photos that I got this trip and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.